happy to announce that this is finally the review for the 2019 Lexus UX250H Hybrid. I'll see you on the other side to tell you my impressions. So Lexus finally has made an entry into the subcompact crossover luxury segment. Uh, there's been a lot of success in this segment by its competitors such as uh, the Mercedes uh, GLA, the Infiniti QX30, as well as the BMW X1. So there is a lot of competition in this segment, but guess what? It's selling really well. So Lexus, although a little late to the party, does come in with a home run here in my opinion. Let's just get into the styling here. Incorporates the daytime running lights into the heads or the headlight display here. Here's a couple things. So you have the, of course, the check mark Lexus is very, very uh, signature for now. And then these are your daytime uh, running lights as well. So these these are the normal headlights. And then when you put on your head high beams, these will come on. So and then your blinker obviously is in there and that looks like to be a regular incandescent bulb instead of an LED. You could see here the options would be for fog lights as well, which we do have on our UX F Sport, um, the fog lights. The grill here, it looks great even though it's not an F Sport. Usually I can't say that for most of our hybrids. Now, if you look at this star pattern, it's very unique. I call it a star pattern. It looks like a you know, like you're going through the universe at light speed or something like that. And of course, being the hybrid, you have the blue highlighted Lexus emblem. This is your normal chrome down here, which I think is just the right amount. Sometimes Lexus can overdo that with the amount of chrome they have on their vehicles, especially this, this beautiful spindle grill. Uh, if you have too much chrome on it, like in, in the RX non-F Sport model, I think it doesn't look that great. Coming to the side here, these are the standard 18 inch wheels. I'll show you the F Sport wheels that you can get as well. There might be one other optional wheel, but these are the only two that I am aware of at the time of this review. Just looking at the lines of this UX, the sun is starting to come up, good morning. Just looking at the lines on the side of this vehicle, there's a lot, of go lot going on. Even the wheel arches have angles to them to give this car more uh, detail. And Lexus is hardly ever short on detail. So you can see the line coming up here on the fender above already the detailed uh, wheel well or the wheel arch. I don't even know what to call it. Your fender, your fender protector. Of course, that line goes all the way to the back. Then you have another line here at the bottom. There's your hybrid emblem. You can take a look from the side. Those mirrors are also shared on the ES and the R. RC and the LC and the brand new uh, LS 500 as well. So you can see on this particular vehicle that line around that chrome and then the chrome on the top for the running uh, with the boards for your luggage racks looks very very solid. I love the little shark fin in the back and then the lip, that rear lip there uh, for the spoiler kind of looks like it's meant to be there in conjunction with that shark fin antenna. Coming around the back here, no shortage of detail. You see those strong lines below the tail lights, and those tail lights are just unbelievable. I'll put how many LEDs are in there. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, but there's a ton of little LEDs on those tail lights, and you have it all the way across. Of course, just the brake lights are kind of right in there when you hit the brakes, uh, but it looks really, really solid. UX250H, and I wish they would have hid the exhaust pipe. That was my problem uh, with the UX F Sport is that the exhaust pipe was sticking out and it didn't look that great. Usually on Lexus hybrids, that exhaust pipe is tucked away and hidden, so you, it's really hard to see, but it's, it is kind of sticking out there, which is a little unfortunate. And then the back uh, corner here, it just looks great. Oh, good morning, guys. Good morning. My hands are freezing, so let's get on the inside. Underneath the hood is the hybrid power plant producing 175 horsepower between the gasoline and the electric motors. And this engine will get you about 41 in town. That's what it's claimed. I'm getting better than that on my review. It'll also get you, I think it's 39 combined. Uh, but if you're a conservative driver, you're going to get a lot better gas mileage based off of my personal experience with this vehicle. On the inside of the 2019 UX250H, it's good to be in this car again. Uh, I was in this car in training. It's a beautiful vehicle from the inside. Now this interior is the Birch interior. It's kind of a, a very light gray. That's the best way I can explain it. Uh, you have a nice little checker detail here on the edge. Uh, and these seats are what's called Nulux. It's not real leather, but I'd be, uh, 
I'd be a fool to think it wasn't because it feels so good. It feels just like our leather in my opinion. The doors, the doors obviously in this particular car, black with the birch on the armrest. It's very simple, very clean. I like it. Um, on the on the dash here is that washy material, black, but here, let's see if I can get a close up. It's almost like a fabric. It's, it's a popular fabric used in, uh, in Japan, in their houses. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the car. And I, and it's gonna be fired up, but the irony of it all is that usually when you start up a hybrid, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> all right, so there is no power tilt. So you have to do that. And is it telescoping as well? It is. So you do have to uh, tilt and telescopic, but it's by that little lever, which I'm okay with because usually I can, I can do it faster, but it does take two hands. It's the only downfall of having a manual one. So you see here the power or the, the sport modes are up here and you can see how it changes um, based off of what mode I have it in. So I'm going to twist it up. There's sport mode. There's normal mode. Okay, I covered up the glare. You can see that eco. That's the only way it tells me eco. That tells me that this car is a little bit more budget because it doesn't have a separate, you know, screen here to make the, the eco mode a little different. Uh, traction controls up there as well. Um, <clears throat> soft touch material here, soft touch here. So good, good material. Now it is hard just because it's, it's 24 degrees. So it feels pretty hard because everything's kind of frozen. Um, you have a hard touch down here for durability, that's okay. I do like the design of these doors in general. Um, <clears throat> here are the vents, now you can also get the optional uh, LED vent covers, it's pretty cool. I'll have to show you a picture of that. And then this is how you adjust the brightness of your screen here. It's all the way up if you didn't know. We do have the automated headlights in terms of high beams and low beams, it'll do it on its own. So that's nice, I'll press that. So the automated head headlights, you press this button and then this little light will turn on to let you know that they're on automated mode. So just a little heads up. Over here, the very simplified switches that you see very reminiscent in the LC500 that I just put up a video on the other day. What I love about this car also as well, you have the automated heated steering wheel and you can have automated heated uh, seats and ventilated seats as well. So awesome, awesome feature that you see here on the entry level Lexus uh, UX. We do have an EV mode, which will limp along, along as long as you have a full battery. Probably about 25 miles an hour at the, at the fastest and only a couple miles. So very simple digital display here. Um, very reminiscent of the ES. And this is the same shifter from the ES with the great stitching. Speaking of great stitching, you see here on the steering wheel, very exquisite. Even though this is an entry level, uh, the, the stitching is is very, very, it's not any different than, than a high level Lexus vehicle in terms of price. A couple cup holders here in the front. You have this little, and it's not coming up right now. Ooh, ooh, something to dock Lexus on. So this, this is your 12 volt here and it's supposed to pop up, but it's really cold. So eh, the little hydraulic in there must be kind of frozen. So that that's something I'll actually nitpick on them for. See, it's not coming up. That's unfortunate. Uh, and this here, I believe this is this is kind of a phone holder, but that's also where your wireless phone charger would be. I just love how simple is everything is up here. It's very easy, your fan, etc. I have it on auto right now. This non-navigation screen always comes up like this. I hate how it forces you to want to connect to the navigation app. I don't want to connect to the navigation app. So it just seems a little clunky. And I know there's ways you can customize it. Uh, but you can see here this car is outfitted with Apple CarPlay. Uh, I don't have an Apple phone, but you can have Apple CarPlay and all the non-navigation UXs. Uh, you can see with the, I love, I love this and what Lexus does here. Uh, speaking of this screen over here, this is controlled by the steering wheel, which I love this steering wheel. It's beautiful. Everything's condensed. You don't have the cruise control down here. Now it's here. And then also your radar uh, cruise control adjustments there as well as your lane keep assist which I just turned on and then uh, over here is how you control the screen so you can see all the different settings your different information screens blah 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 um, today I'm gonna focus mainly on miles per gallon which I'm gonna reset here in a little bit uh, once I finish the interior overview here's all the radio controls so this is how you tune the radio this is how you change the stations um, and this is the volume, this is how you turn it on. So, and there's a button here. Hopefully you can see there's a button here that will go AM, FM, XM. 
and this will also do USB auxiliary uh, things like that so very simple this is the large touchpad it is very premium feeling um, despite what a lot of people say about the touchpad I was in a Mercedes Mercedes Benz the other day and I felt like that was awfully more confusing and harder to use uh, than this touchpad. Here you can see the energy monitor, what's going on. You can see where the battery is in this car. It's below the trunk area. Up top we have a nice compass, of course some one-touch lights, and then we have your sunroof here. We also have a vanity mirror, very large mirror, and you can see we have a very bright light as well. I think it's time to get into the back seat. Well, let's real quick, the heated seat feels very warm. And then here is your gas cap as well as your trunk and then your hood latch as well. One last thing, I forgot to open this up for you guys. Uh, there is your USB and there's a little light here, which is nice right on the outside. And these are all illuminated as well in the nighttime for your USBs and auxiliary. Getting in the back here, it's gonna be a little, little bit tight. Now this seat is all the way back. I have not adjusted it. Uh, but I do have enough room for my legs to kind of spread out. Usually when in the UXs and the other ones I've driven, uh, this seat is not as far back. So rest assured, as long as the person in the back seat is not six foot one and the person in front of them six three, you'll be okay. Here are your vents, pretty simple. And then down here, thank God, are the USB quick chargers. Mat pocket on the passenger side, not on the driver's side. The seats are very comfortable even though I'm kind of upright. Uh, and then of course you have a couple cup holders here, nice little feature as well. We have some map lights back here, and it's just one light. It's not, you can't customize it like you can in the IS, for example. Doors very similar, of course you have the same handles as the front and the same handles you see in the ES and the, you know, LS and the LC, for example. Pretty simple, little speaker down here on the bottom. Now this has the basic stereo system. If you want the upgraded stereo system, you're gonna have to go for the navigation model. Opening up the rear hatch here, it is power automated, which is great to have that. Of course, it's a luxury car, but it's nice to have that even though this is an entry. This is a surprise for me. We have a little 12 volt back here. I've never noticed that before. Uh, and then we have this little, this is a little hook and you have one on each side if you wanted to put some strings in here to, to hang stuff. Um, you, here's your all weather mats inside here. This is your tonneau cover, which is foldable. Go ahead and pause that. It's kind of a little piece of cloth that you can uh, stow away. Which is, lot, which is nice, some people think it's cheap, I like it. First aid kit, standard Lexus, and here is your cargo mat. A good amount of space back here, it's gonna be really easy to fit things in. Now this is kind of a higher uh, entry point to the trunk area, but uh, overall there is a good amount of space back there for one to two, maybe three people for a trip. Put in a drive and it's time to drive the UX Hybrid. This is the top of the stack. Now you could also get this car in F Sport trim, which I probably mentioned already, but I'm really excited to drive this car. I'm really excited to see what kind of mileage I can get out of it. That's what this car is kind of designed for. is It's a great city car with great mileage capacity. Um, so I'm really, really pumped uh, for any new Lexus, but especially this one because I feel like it can reach uh, a lot more people. Now this also has lumbar control, which someone who's in here before me had way too much lumbar going on, which is fine. And now I got the seat adjusted for me and it feels very, very comfortable. These seats are very warm. I can feel it through my coat. So the heated mechanism in here is very, very effective. And it's only on the lowest uh, bar right now for the heated seat. So these things can get hot. Speaking of hot, the steering wheel, uh, it's just on the sides for the most part that's heated. I feel a little bit at the top, which is a nice change uh, because Lexus has always been, you know, kind of known for their uh, side steering wheel heating, not the, not the top and the bottom. I actually feel it pretty much everywhere on the steering wheel, but mainly on the sides. And let's reset that miles per gallon so we can get a perfect idea of how this car is going to handle on a normal commute. The brakes feel excellent. The steering wheel is perfect in my opinion. I was in the GS last and the GS just had a perfect steering wheel. This thing feels absolutely perfect as well. Of course it's brand new, the leather feels great, but I haven't been in very many Lexus vehicles where the steering wheel over time just doesn't hold up. So I'm sure this thing is gonna be excellent for many years to come. It's just very premium feeling uh, with the leather just everywhere on the steering wheel. There's very, very, small bits of plastic, mainly for the buttons and the enclosure of the buttons. I'll take a picture for you guys to kind of show that. And the emblem looks great on this vehicle as well. 
very very large rear view mirror I can see more than what the the rear window will allow me to do uh, so that's that's kind of funny that the mirror is oversized for the rear window but that's okay it's better too big than too small right okay we're gonna turn here onto the freeway foot to the floor you know I don't feel <laughs> this does have about 11 more horsepower than the other UX and I can't really feel it I mean it's 11 horsepower so unless you're going from an 11 horsepower vehicle to a 22 horsepower vehicle you know of course you could feel with less horsepower going from 169 to about 180 I don't I didn't really notice a difference now the difference in the transmission is definitely there so the regular UX has the real first gear followed by a bunch of simulated gears by the CVT. This just has a CVT being that it's a hybrid. So I'm going to put my foot down. And that was 68. And that's plenty. It's plenty fast for normal commuting. It's plenty fast for your everyday city commute. Uh, if you commute every day and you have very, very little highway time, this car is going to be more okay. If you have a lot of highway time, this car will still be okay. I'm sure this car can go over 100 miles an hour, which is faster than most people need a car to be. I do have a nice little indicator on my screen that tells me the speed limit's 55, so that is a great, great addition to this vehicle. And after flogging this car, I'm still getting 20 miles per gallon, uh, but I'm gonna take it much more conservative here. I'm gonna put it into eco mode for the rest of my review, and we're gonna just press reset. So maximum miles per gallon now, I knew this car wouldn't have surprised me or impressed me with the acceleration. I figured it was going to be very similar uh, to the UX F Sport that I drove. Speaking of which, the UX F Sport has the paddle shifters. Uh, this particular hybrid, being that it's not F Sport, no paddle shifters, just your normal steering wheel uh, with no paddle shifters on it. The ride, you do feel bumps in the road, but the car is still very, very quiet. It's not the most quiet Lexus vehicle, far from it, but it is very, very quiet for any vehicle. The visibility, it's pretty good. And the great thing about this car is that most of them you get are gonna have the blind spot monitors added. That also has a rear cross traffic alert when you're backing up. Um, the visibility isn't, yeah, you do have the blind spots in the corner, but the visibility for the most part is really good for such a small vehicle. Now the mirror does, it is large and it does get in my view, but that doesn't bother me knowing that this is a, is a smaller vehicle to begin with. It bothers me more on the NX and the RX being that they're much bigger vehicles than this, but yet the visibility doesn't seem to be a whole lot better on those cars. So I'm going about 62, 63 right now. And after I reset the miles per gallon tracker, I'm getting over 50 miles per gallon, which is kind of hard to believe just because I'm used to being in luxury vehicles that are getting around 20 to 30. Uh, so it is it is a nice little, is it too bright for you guys? There we go. Cruise control, I'm gonna set it for 70 miles per hour now. And it does have the radar cruise control. Where this car is gonna shine the best is gonna be obviously in the inner city. That's what this car was designed for. That's also why Lexus has, are trying to implement a subscription-based lease in some major cities. Like, I wanna say it's New York, Miami, Chicago, uh, and LA. I believe those are the four cities. The brakes are very impressive. Um, now the brakes should also be maybe a little bit stronger in the hybrid model in terms of their touchiness because it does have the regenerative braking, but I'd give it an A to A plus. Uh, they feel even better than the GS uh, brakes that I reviewed. Well, I didn't review the brakes, I reviewed the car uh, last week and this car, this car just feels a little bit more, the brake system feels a little bit more modern. Um, and very, very smooth, very linear with the progression as well. Okay, we're gonna get into the handling portion, which the last vehicle I was in was the F-Sport, I should say the last UX I was in uh, was the F-Sport model. So in theory, that should have a little bit, you know, tighter suspension than this car, but I really don't expect this one to feel much different. I do feel a little bit more horsepower out of the turn compared to the other UX. Although I didn't feel that horsepower when I was accelerating onto the highway. 
the handling feels just the same. The steering wheel is very, very good. Uh, it's, it gives you more confidence. If your steering wheel is perfect, then it gives you more confidence in the turns. And this steering wheel is 100% uh, feels amazing and perfect in my hands. And it handled those turns very, very well for, for a vehicle of this class, which is a small crossover. So it might not handle it as well as the outgoing CT, uh, but only the only way you would be able to tell is if you drove them back to back and maybe on a track. I want to talk a little bit how this compares to the CT uh, 200 by Lexus. This car is better in every way other than maybe fuel mileage. The fuel mileage is probably a little bit better on that CT. It's lower to the ground. I'm sure it's a little bit more aerodynamic. However, this car has four wheel drive or should say all wheel drive. It also has more power than that underpowered CT. The underpowered CT is great for cities um, and for commuting, so is this car. This car is just better, it gives you, like I said, all wheel drive, it gives you more room inside, it gives you more versatility, um, and the visibility is better as it sits up higher. So this car is better in every way other than maybe maximum fuel economy. I just wanted to add that you know the comparison because I know the CT is still sold worldwide it has been discontinued in, in the United States in 2017 and this is the pretty much the direct replacement for the CT which didn't sell very well here in the States this car on the other hand with the current you know the current car market crossovers being the big deal right now this car in theory should sell very very well for Lexus I'm very excited to see how this car is able to stack up against a competition maybe at about a year from now how the total sales kind of stack up against the x1 and the gla 250 and also uh, the counterpart from infinity as well overall the 2019 ux 250h is a home run from lexus i really hope this car sells like hotcakes because it gives you the all-wheel drive it gives you more horsepower it gives you incredible fuel economy uh, i was getting about 45 miles per gallon uh, during my whole trip today uh, so i hope to see you guys in the comments below uh, i'd love to tell you more about this this car down below hit that like button if you like the ux as well as the video and i'll see you in the next one